set. Okay, everybody, welcome to class. I uh, hope you had a great uh, night last night, but we'll resume to uh, what we're doing right now. This is rational functions. We are actually graphing rational functions. Yes? There's no rubber band shooting going on in this classroom at all. Okay, so we're talking about graphing these rational functions. Okay, today there's a lot of content coming your way. So I want to make sure that you have a chance to actually work through some of these problems. So I'm going to go through these, skip some things, kind of a little bit on a brisk pace. Because I think that you learning it by doing it is better than me explaining it to you through all these different types of examples. So I'm going to try to go through this a little bit faster um, than usual. So a rational function can be written as two polynomials. It's a fraction of two polynomials. So an example of that would be, I don't know, um, x squared plus x minus 2 all over x to the third plus 4. Those are two polynomials. Correct top and bottom? This is a rational function. A non-example would be like if I had like a square root of x plus 3 and then let's put like a 2 in the bottom or something like that. That's a non-example because the top is not a uh, rational function. So this is a non-example. Okay, so we're going to graph these. It's going to ask for all these little things. If I just look forward real quick, it's going to be asking me for all these little pieces. So I'm going to kind of go through before we actually do a graph and explain what these pieces represent. So the graph has zeros, which is roots or y-intercepts, is when we set the top equal to zero. If you notice, this is the top right here. So p of x to the top is when we set the top equal to zero. Vertical asymptote, well, in a fraction, the bottom is not allowed to equal zero. That's illegal in the math world. <coughs> so if that happens, there's going to be a vertical asymptote at that point. So that's where we're going to set the bottom equal to zero. Quiet over there. No sneezing. All right, so far so good? Okay, a rational function is going to have a hole. This is also known as a removable con discontinuity. Those are the same thing. Whenever you can factor something out and then it cancels. So like here's an example of that. Like if I have x squared plus 2x plus 1 all over x squared minus 1. Does that factor and cancel from the top and bottom? Yeah. Yeah, how's the top factor? x plus 1, x plus 1? Yeah. How's the bottom factor? So what's going to happen here is this is going to cancel. Then we have a hole there. We have a hole, oh, we cancel that. So we have a hole at x equals negative 1. We set whatever we canceled equal to 0. So we set x plus 1 equal to 0. So we're going to get a hole at x equals negative 1. And then to find the y value, you would just plug it back into the new one. So this function actually becomes x plus 1, x minus 1. And then we would just uh, use this function for everything that we go through. Okay? What's the y value of this hole? If you plug in a negative 1, it's 0. So y is going to equal 0. So th it's the coordinate point negative 1, 0. That was fun. Okay, now for the stuff that this is going to be a review from last year. It can get a little confusing, though. Um, this is super important in calculus. So I kind of talk about it in a complex way just to kind of show you like where this all really comes from because I hate it when I just tell you one thing and you're just like oh I'm just going to go along with it so like for the first rule is if the highest power of x is the denominator then you're going to have a horizontal asymptote as y equals zero and I don't want you all to go just like yep I believe that and then move on because you don't really learn it you're just memorizing it I want you to kind of understand so horizontal asymptotes depends on the highest power um, in the numerator in the denominator so if the highest power is in the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. I'm going to explain this. The definition of a horizontal asymptote, and I will explain this. By the way, that's a cursive L, because I don't write Ls like a straight lines in math, because it looks like a 1. The limit 
as x approaches infinity of, I don't know, just any function. Okay, and you'll see this limit notation in a moment because you can kind of see it in the back here. It talks about it, so um, I'll I'll kind of go back to it. So this is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, this talks about the function, the end behavior of the function. This is the behavior all the way to the right of a function, and we can do the same thing for negative infinity as well. Okay, that's going to talk about the end behavior all the way to the left. Remember for the polynomials where we're like up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, all that fun stuff? That was talking about end behavior. That was technically talking about, hey, what's the limit of the polynomial as x approaches infinity? And we'd be like, oh, well, it's an even positive, so it's up, up. And infinity is positive, so it goes to the right, so the answer would then have been up. So this is kind of a more of a little bit technical thing. So now let's talk about, if I have the highest power of x as the denominator, so here's an example is like 1 over, I don't know, x plus 1. This horizontal asymptote is going to be 0. Okay, let's start plugging in numbers that are pretty big, because you agree that infinity is a big number? Okay, so, and the whole idea of limits is to estimate. And I can't write f of infinity, because infinity is not a real value. It's an idea. So let's just plug in really, really large values, like a million. If I plug in like a million, what's 1 over a million plus 1 approximately? It's like point zero zero. There's like seven zeros or six zeros. So it's like point zero 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 one. Very close to what number? Zero. What if I plug in a billion? Even closer. So what is it approaching as we get further and further and further away from zero, zero. all the way out to infinity? It get, it's going to equal zero. So that's why that if our power on the bottom is larger, it's going to equal zero. So I'm going to get to the other ones in a moment. Let's look at letter A. What is my highest power? First off x squared, and where is it located? Bottom. Bottom. So what does that mean the horizontal asymptote is? Zero. So this is going to be y equals 0. Are we all on the same page so far? Yeah. We're good? Okay. That was actually the easy part. So I'm glad, we're, I'm glad we're good. Let's talk about the next one. The highest power of x is the same in the numerator and denominator, then the horizontal asymptote will be the coefficients in front of those. Okay, I'll kind of go through. I'm going to kind of give you like the, the inside baseball uh, part of this. I'm not going to expect you to show all this work, but I'm going to show why this is true. So if you look at letter B, where's the highest power? It's on top and bottom. What is the highest power, by the way? It's x squared, so what's the coefficients in front? 4 and 1. Four and one. So you, the answer should be? Do you know why, or are you just going to follow this rule? I'm going to follow the rule. I don't want to learn math. I'm going to explain why. So technically how this is done is you divide every single term by the highest power. What is the highest power? We just said it. X squared. So I'm going to divide everything by X squared. So if I have 4X squared over X squared plus 4X over X squared minus 24 over X squared. So I'm going to have a bunch of little fractions in here x squared over x squared, oh, I've got the x, um, plus x over x squared minus 20 over x squared. So I have a bunch of little fractions here. Okay? Let's simplify some of these fractions. So the first one turns into, what's the 4x squared over x squared turn into? Turns into a 4. What's the next one turn into? 4 over x, you all said at the same exact time, wonderful. And the last one doesn't change. Did I lose anybody yet? I mean, maybe. I think right now I'm a little dicey. All I'm doing right now is just dividing everything by the highest power, just to show you what happens. And then on the bottom, I'm going to get 1 plus 1 over x minus 20 over x squared. Now, what's the rule that we just went over? If the denominator is larger, it really goes to zero. zero. So this 4 is going to stay. What about this 4 over x? When I start to plug in numbers that are very large, what's that going to turn into? So when I get 4 plus 0 minus, that happens when I plug in a, a large number. It goes to 0. So minus 0 all over. The bottom is 1 plus 0 minus 0. What's the final answer? 
So four. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals four. That's why that's true. Do you need to do that work every time? No. No, you don't need to. I'm just kind of getting a little bit of like the inside. Like, hey, this is why this actually happens. It's not just, I'm going to memorize this rule. Let's not do that. So look at letter C. I'm going to give you 15 seconds on your own to figure out what the answer is. You don't, you don't need to show work. Ollie, what'd you get for C? What's the horizontal asymptote? Stop looking at other people's papers. <laughs> Ollie's friend. <laughs> Is that mean to him or like mean as in you don't know how to do it? No, like we're not friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ollie, to call you out like that. What's that, Ollie? You got one as an answer? Oh my gosh, that was great. How did you get one as an answer, Ollie? You, you said because the highest power on top and bottom is x squared, so you divide the coefficients, you get one. Ollie, that was wonderful! Does anybody uh, agree or uh, does anybody disagree with Ollie? Any any questions for Ali? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's look at the last one here. All right. If the highest power is in the numerator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So um, and here's the reason why. Let's say that I have like x squared plus one all over I don't know x minus one something like that. Okay. Now again, I'm plugging in infinity. So I'm plugging like in a million. I'm going to get a million squared, which is a trillion, plus one, all over a million minus one. That's a pretty big number, isn't it? Yeah. And if I go bigger than a million, it's going to get even bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> the bottom's growing, but the top is growing even faster, so it's going to go to infinity. Or it's going to go to negative infinity, depending on the sign. So is there an asymptote if I'm going to infinity or negative infinity? No, it's actually like a polynomial, it has polynomial behavior. It's either going to be going up or down. So it's going to go like up, down, or down, up, or up, up, or down, down. So this one is kind of similar to what we did in class. So if the power is higher on top, there is no uh, asymptote. So let's look at letter D. What is the highest power in D? Located where? On the top, the numerator. So is there a horizontal asymptote? No, so we're just going to write no horizontal asymptote. Okay, now you, I taught you all three rules. Go ahead and try the last one on your own. I call my random person. Should I call on her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just tired. I want to learn. Okay. Uh, <laughs> e, please help me out. <laughs> what did you get for E? <laughs> wow, she's like, there's no more horizontal asymptote. She's got an attitude at it, too. <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> because she's tired. That's why there's no horizontal asymptote. Oh, why? Oh, because of the rule. Because of the rule. <laughs> that we should understand why the rule works. So my whole point of this was I wanted to take a little bit of time on this, make sure you understand why the rules work. Okay? I easily could have just told you, I don't know if you heard this before, Bobo Button. I could have easily just said, Bobo Button, don't understand anything, just do it. And he would have no clue what the heck is going on. Which, by the way, Bobo Button does not work all the time. So I don't like it. All right. Okay, the limit, we're going to talk about this a little bit, uh, introducing you into it, is the y value of the function that is approaching. Approaching is very important. Approaching does not mean it's exact. Approaching means that it is an approximation.
This is different. Like if I ask you what f of 2 is, for instance, I want an actual answer. I want a number that actually exists. If I ask you for the limit as x approaches 2, that might not be the exact answer. That's what the sentence is saying. So the fu if the function is continuous, then the limit is the exact answer. If there is a whole, then the limit is the y value of the whole. This is important. This will confuse you when I start doing it for this next problem. If the limit is x approaches infinity or negative infinity, it's just the y value of the horizontal asymptote. So kind of know that. Um, I'm going to go through it again a little quickly. Let's go ahead and do this graph one. We're going to go to a brisk pace. I'm going to try to do each graph in, in like about five minutes. Which is kind of, which might too be like, whoa, it's really slow. Trust me, there's a lot going on to it. Okay, so for this first graph right here, the first thing I always do is, can I factor and cancel? Because that's going to make my life so much easier. So for number one, does this factor and cancel? <coughs> yes. yes, how does it factor and cancel? So you're going to factor the top three, x minus three, and then x plus three, x minus three, which equals three over x plus three. Okay, that means that there is a whole where, Gabe? Very good. There's a hole at positive three. So the hole is at three comma something. When you cancel something out, you set what you cancel out equal to zero. So three comma, now here's our brand new function we're using for the rest of the way. Plug in the three, what do we get? <coughs> three over six, which is one half. So our whole is at three comma one half. I'm gonna graph in a moment. I wanna get all these blanks filled out. Horizontal asymptote. Y equals zero, why is that? Yeah, power is larger in the bottom. What's my vertical asymptote? Who remembers what I do for vertical asymptote? I told you like 15 minutes ago. Set the bottom equal to zero because the bottom is not allowed to equal zero. So when I set the bottom equal to zero, what do I get? Very good, class. X equals negative three. Yeah. Ali, they're coming for you. The x-intercept. Who remembers what I do for the x-intercept? You can do the top equals to zero. Okay, so we get three equals zero. Since there's no x, can, can uh, three equal zero? So is there an x-intercept? No, so there is none. We didn't talk about the y-intercept. This is when you set x equal to zero because your answer is going to be zero comma something. So when I set x equal to zero, what happens here? You're going to get a one. I'm going to graph it and then answer these limit questions. So the first thing I always do is graph my graph. <laughs> graph my asymptote. So I'm going to do a horizontal asymptote at zero. <laughs> so I drew my asymptotes. Uh, what points do I know? I know three and one half, and what is that? A hole. So I draw an open circle for a hole. Not a closed circle, an open circle. What else do I know? You know the y Which is? Awesome. Okay, so now for graphing these. This should not be new to you. Am I correct in saying that these types of graphs should not be new to you? <laughs> What's going to happen is I'm going to be graphing on the top or bottom. I can't graph them in each of them because if I do, that's not a function. I'm graphing on the top or the bottom in each section. So this only has a left section and a right section. So on the right-hand section, is, it's kind of obvious. Am I graphing on the top or the bottom? Uh, top. Why is that? I already have points up there, so I'm graphing on the top. Let's go ahead and do that. Make sure you hug your asymptote. And make sure that you connect your hole with the other side, but don't go through it.
on your test or your quiz or anything I do, if you have like an open hole but then you draw through it, that tells you you don't understand what a hole is. So make sure that you don't actually go through the open circle. Um, and on the left hand side, how do I figure out if I'm going to go top or bottom? Is this question? Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Like this, that, and that. How do I know like this going like that? Because yeah. asymptotes means it's gonna hug it. You have to hug asymptotes. So I know that's gonna hug on top over here. I know it's gonna hug to the right over here. This is just what the, all the shapes look like. Because yeah, I have the hole on top and the, and the intercept on top. So on the left-hand side, how do I know where this goes on the left-hand side? <laughs> you, well, what if we plug in an x-value? Let's plug in an x-value. The easiest x-value, like a little x and y chart. This one, I only need to find one value, though. Uh, I'll plug in a negative 4. Always pick what's next to the asymptote because the numbers work out pretty nicely. You should start spitting out 1s. So if I plug in a negative 4, I'm going to get 3 over, what's negative 4 plus 3? So it's going to be 3 over negative 1, which is? <laughs> negative 3. So knowing that point, I'm going to graph above or below? Below. Here I go. Okay, let's do the limit stuff. So, this is asking for the limit as x approaches negative infinity. That means end behavior on the left-hand side. What's my end behavior on the left-hand side if I keep going up forever? It's going to be smaller and smaller approaching what number? Negative. Zero. <laughs> this next one gets tricky. Before I do this next one, I'm going to reread a sentence that I read earlier, which is all the way up here. If the function has a hole at some point, then the limit is the y value of that hole. So when I do limit as x approaches 3, then my answer is going to be what? 1 half. Very good. Again, the limit is an approximation. There is no value. If I were to ask you, what's f of 3, you'd write, does not exist. There is no value at 3. Limit means approximation. So what is the height approximately? It's one half. Just not exactly at it. Okay, here's the next one. Negative three. This one is a little bit trickier. So here's the key. Limits that needs to match on the left and right in order for it to work. Like, for instance, for this hole, you see how the left, of as I'm go going closer and closer to the hole from the left and the right, I get the exact same value, same height. You agree? So the left and the right need to match. So as I'm getting closer to this hole, the left height and then the right height are the same. What about at negative 3? What's the height? If, I, if I'm going left of negative 3 and I'm going right of negative 3, are they approaching each other? They're going different directions. So this limit does not exist. Like I said, there's lots of information here. Lots of it. <coughs> yes? No. Okay, let's move on. No. Uh, the limit, the, it needs to match on the left hand and the right side. Right? If they're going in opposite, I'm taking each of my fingers. As I'm getting closer and closer to negative three, if my fingers are going in opposite directions, the limit does not exist. Now, if the, for some reason I had a graph up here and then I was going in the same direction forever and ever and ever, I'd be going to positive infinity, for instance. So the limit like if I had this, if I had a graph of this. If I had this, the right and the left would actually match. They'd be matching going up and up forever, which would be positive infinity. But if it's opposite, one's up, one's down, Limit does not exist. 
All right, let's go to number two. Same idea here. A little different stuff, a little trickier stuff going on. Well, maybe not trickier. Just stick with the guns, knowing what, how to do this. Question. Explain why. Yeah. Okay. Because again, as I'm going, as I'm pushing the hole from the left and the right, do my fingers match up? Yes. That means the limit does exist. They're matching up at, at approximately what? Because remember, a limit is an approximation. It's not the exact value. It is sometimes, not all the time. So whenever you have a hole, the limit of the y value is the y value of the hole. So the limit at 3 is the y value of the hole. Every time. Yes. Pretty much. <laughs> I want to see all of you on, on the assessment like this. All right, number two. Okay, can I factor and cancel here? So I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, so I'm not going to factor it until I absolutely need to. Um, so since it does not factor and cancel, is there a hole? No. That's pretty cool. There's none. Horizontal asymptote is what, Ollie? I know what's going to happen, Ollie. Your schedule's going to get changed. You're going to get out of this class and move into a different class and then, of mine. <laughs> and then you're going to poison it. I hope Ollie's moving because he doesn't want the same teacher. <laughs> what's that, Ollie? You said y equals zero? You're brilliant today. Why is it y equals zero? Bigger on bottom. Boom, let's go. Vertical asymptote. What do I do for that? The bottom has to equal zero. So I need to factor this. So the fa bottom factor is how? Minus four plus one. So I'm write two vertical asymptotes. X equals? 4 and negative 1. X intercept. Is there an X intercept? Why not? There's no X's on the top. I can't set it equal to 0, so there are none. What's the Y intercept? Plug in a 0 and for X. Probably easy to do it on the first one. When I do that, I'm going to get 0, comma 5 over negative 4, which is the same thing as negative 5 fourths. You good so far? Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go to the graph and let's start graphing this up. I got three different asymptotes. value can I plug on to my graph right now? Zero on negative five fourths. Which is like here-ish. Okay, so, well, in the middle section, I already know where it's going. Is it going to graph above or below? below. It's going to go below. Okay? So now, I need to make sure that I'm not, like, going through the horizontal asymptote or anything. So I really want to just double-check to make sure that this is going to hug below here 
and here. I just want to double check that real quick. Question. It's not just like a parabola. This one is. It definitely is. But I kind of want to just double check. Reason it be, being is in the example we're going to do after this, it's going to do something kind of weird. So I just want to be safe. So let's go ahead and plot more x values. So in the middle, what's another good x value to plot? Well, two could work, but I'd rather go next to the asymptote because I'll get cleaner numbers. Plug in a three, because three is next to four. When I plug in a three, I'm going to plug it back up in here. I'm going to get five over, what's three minus four? Negative one. What's three plus one? Four. So I get negative four on the bottom. So what's my value? Negative five over four. So it's the same thing? So... That means I'm good. I'm going to actually be hugging this guy down below. I don't really know how high to make it, but let's not cross that asymptote because it's not going to. Question. Yes. I mean, you're saying, like, why, you're asking why I did this? Because what if it was up here? It doesn't mean it won't cross it. Horizontal asymptotes just means it's not going to cross it at infinity. It can cross it in between. Which I'm going to do an example of that coming up. I like your skepticism. I like it. But it's going to happen. And I'll show you how to recognize Wait, it. so how do you know what number to choose for x? I always go one next to the asymptote. So to get the left-hand side right here, what's a good number that you pick? What's next to negative 1? Negative 2. So let's pick a negative 2. The reason is is because... This will turn out to be nice numbers. So I have 5 on top. Not going to change. All over. Oh. Get off the phone. I need that back. That's my asymptote marker. So when I plug in a negative 2, what do I get? 5 over 6. Is it, wait, 5 over 6? Oh, it is less than 1. Me not so smart. Whatever, you get the idea. And then what's another good number to plug in? Because then you get the right hand side. 5. And I do that, I'm going to get. 5 over 6, again, just under 1, and then go ahead and sketch it. Okay, let's answer these limit questions. What's the limit as we approach negative infinity? What's going on in negative infinity? It's approaching what number? 0. It's kind of a weird question, but what's the limit at 3? Is there anything weird going on at 3? No. There are no holes, no asymptotes, so the value is just whatever the y value is. Didn't I find out what it was? Right here. So it's negative 5 fourths. Woo, it's a long video. If you think we're done, we're not. Okay, so there's a long paragraph up here. You can read, but some of you can't, so I'll read it for you. Although a rational function can never cross a vertical asymptote, sometimes it can cross a horizontal one. That's what I was getting at. We're going to be able to cross horizontal asymptotes. How do you know that? Well, to determine if it crosses, so I'm right here, so to determine if the graph crosses the horizontal asymptote, Substitute the horizontal asymptote in for y and then solve for x. If you get an untrue statement, then there is not, it's not going to cross. But if you get an x value, such as like x equals 3, then your graph is going to cross the horizontal asymptote. Okay? So that's how you know. And usually the questions will be like probing questions too, such as, look down here. Does the graph cross the horizontal asymptote? That means red alert, red alert, it might. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Well, then you just write no, and then you go about your business. Okay, so let's, I'm just going to do the equation for 3 here, 
and we're just I'm just to show you what this is going to look like because this will be a one where it does cross it at. Um, <coughs> or I don't know, maybe it doesn't. I forgot. Who knows? Okay, so first off, before I do anything, I want to see if I can factor and cancel. Does this top one factor at all? Well, it becomes 3x squared minus 3x minus 10. What's, and then the bottom is just x squared minus x minus 20. Is it factor um, anymore? x minus 5, x plus 2. The bottom becomes mm, minus 5 plus 4. So now, real quickly, let's go ahead and find the uh, horizontal asymptote. You can always do that for the original. That's the only time I would ever say you can use the original for. What's the horizontal asymptote of the original? What is it? Three. Three. Set this equal to our horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to get three equals three x plus two all over x plus 4. So let's go ahead and cross multiply here. When I cross multiply, I'm going to get 3x plus 4 equals 3x plus 2. That looks terrible because I have a little typo. Deal with it. That should be not look like an f. It should like equals 3. So those 3's can go away, right? Can you divide each one by 3? So you're going to get x plus 4 equals x plus 2. Do the x's go away? You can subtract x both sides. get 4 equals 2. So is this an untrue statement or a true statement? So is there going to be an asymptote that crosses? This is no cross. This is a big old no cross. That's how you tell. But what about one that does cross? Hey, let Let's let's graph the next one. I have a feeling that this one's going to cross. Okay, so for number five, first thing I always tell you for these to graph them is to do what? Let's go ahead, let's go ahead and factor and cancel. Uh, looks like this is going to be 4x squared minus 2x minus 3, which is x minus 3 plus 1. Is that correct? So I get 4... X, plus, x minus 3, x plus 1. On the bottom here, this looks like grouping x squared, so I'm going to x minus 2 minus 9x minus 2, which is going to give me x squared minus 9x minus 2. Am I going too fast? Good. Because I want you to go faster. You should be able to do this without me showing you how to do it. If you can't, this is not the class for you. So does anything cancel from the top and bottom? Yes. No, it does. <coughs> so what's my brand new function now? On top, I'm going to get 4. X plus 1. On the bottom, I'm going to get... X minus 2. X plus 3. Since I canceled that out, I have a hole, right? A hole at 3 comma, it's got to plug it in, this is kind of a, uh, a bummer, but 3 plus 1 is, so on the top we're going to get 4 times 4, which is, let's do a little bit of side work over here, we're going to get 16 all over, 3 minus 1 is, or sorry, 3 minus 2, 1, I like how you said the correct answer anyway, and then 3 plus 3 is, 6, what's 16 over 6? Eight thirds. So that's my removal con discontinuity. That's my hole. Are we surviving back there, Ollie's table? I, I know there's a lot of notes. I'm trying to go fast and also say these stupid things along the way to keep your attention. So I'm trying. Horizontal asymptote. Look at the original. It's a little bit easier. Is there a horizontal asymptote? No. Figure on the bottom. Y equals zero. 
Vertical asymptote, what is that? Negative 3 and x equals 2. X intercept. Plug in uh, or set the top equal to 0. What happens if you set the top equal to 0? You're going to get 4x plus 1 equals 0. You're going to get x plus 1 equals 0. You're going to get x equal negative 1. So we're going to get negative 1 comma 0. Red flag. Red flag. What's my red flag here? What do you notice? That's kind of weird. It's just going to cross the asymptote. Right there. It says that's just at 0, but it's going to cross it. And that's okay. That's normal. What's my y-intercept? Plug in a 0 for x's. So when I do that, I'll do the side work. When I plug in a 0 on top, I'm going to get 4 times 1 all over negative 2 times 3, which is 4 over negative 6 is And also, here's my red flag question. Does the graph cross the horizontal asymptote? It does, but here's the work. So what did we say the asymptote was? It was 0 equals my function. When I cross multiply, what happens to the denominator? It goes away. Um, you mind if I divide that 4 over there as well, make it easier? So I'm going to get 0 equals x plus 1. And I already did this work, didn't I? I'm going to get x equal negative 1. So it's going to cross it at negative 1. All right, I'm ready for everything. Here we go. Horizontal asymptote is at 0. I'm going to get an asymptote at negative 3. Asymptote at 2. I'm going to get a hole where? 3 and 8 thirds, which is just under 3. I'm going to have an x-intercept where? Negative 1. I'm going to have a y-intercept where? 0, negative 2 thirds. Let's find the rest of the numbers that are important. Those numbers are always the numbers that are next to asymptotes. So. Let's plug in a negative 4. This is kind of a bummer because I understand that you have to go over here and plug everything in, but let's go ahead and do it real quick. When I plug in a negative 4, I'm going to get on top negative 12 on top, you agree? All over negative 6 on the bottom, uh, no, positive 6 on the bottom. So that gives me an answer of negative 2. What's the next number that's next to an asymptote? Negative 2? Because I don't know if there's anything weird and crazy, but just double check. When I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get uh, negative 4 on top, negative 4 on bottom. So I'm going to get 1. I'm just making this math up at this point. Let's plug in a 1 next to the asymptote. When I plug in a 1, I'm going to get 8 on top. Negative 4 on the bottom. Negative 2. And, well, I don't need to plug anything for 3 because I already, know, I already know that I'm good. I already know that answer. So here I go. You just hum whatever you want. I made that up. Probably came from my kids' cartoon shows that they watch. Do I draw through the hole? No, I just kind of connect the two ends. Otherwise, you lose points, and I don't want you to do that. Woo! That was a doozy. And I'm not done yet. Here we go. What's the limit as x approaches 3? 8 thirds. It's a hole. What's the height of the hole? Here we go. Negative 3. Two different ends. Does not exist. Very good, everybody. At 1. Oh, I did one. That's negative two. At infinity. Zero. I think that might be it.
Hey, I'm just going to real quickly do six and seven. This doesn't take long. I think you can figure it out if you absolutely had to. It's, it is on your worksheet. That's uh, good practice. So a function that has a vertical asymptote of x equals negative two. Well, I need to make up. It wants you to write an equation. So I'm going to make my own equation up, f of x equals. If it has a vertical asymptote of negative two, what's the factor? x plus two, and where does it go? On the bottom. Uh, if I want a hole at x minus 4, that means it's, it has a factor of x minus 4. And where's that going to go? Top and bottom. Oh. Does it say that we have to do it? Do we have to like do anything else to it? No. Am I done? Yeah. Cool. Let's do the last one here. Function has a horizontal asymptote. Ooh, we'll do that one last. And then it has a vertical asymptote that's 5 and a hole at negative 3. All right, so let's do the horizontal last. The vertical asymptote, so that's going to be a factor of x minus 5 where? Hole at negative 3. Okay. Horizontal asymptote at four, which means that my powers have to match. What's my power on the bottom? Square. What's my power on the top? So I need to add an x. You can do x whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But what does matter was what the coefficient of the top have to be. It has to be a four. I'll just do four x. You could do four x plus whatever the heck you want or minus whatever you want if you really want. But let's give it that. Yes. Say that one more time. Four. Four. What's that going to give you? Is that going to give you a hole though? Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying this. You're saying four x plus three all squares. Yeah, you can. I don't think I know. Yeah, you can. You can put a four and then square. It. You're totally cool doing that too. Any questions, comments, concerns? Woo! 47, 48 minutes. That was a long time. There's a question. Oh, never mind. We'll keep going. Question. Yeah, you can put it inside, outside. It don't matter.